So tonight is all about CNC. Before we go any further, big thank you to Iconic CNC and Amana Tools for sponsoring this and making events like this free for everybody so that you can watch. So here's the agenda I have in my head. What I wanna do is start out by just talking about the CNC machine in general, because there's some jargon involved here. And if you're not familiar with CNCs, I wanna make sure you've got an understanding of that so that as we talk further, we're not confusing anybody. So we'll do that. And then the piece that's on the machine right now needs one more cut in order to finish. So we'll put in that bit. And what's cool is that'll give you the opportunity to see bit changes and what it takes to get that next cut going. While that's running, we're gonna go over to the workbench and we're gonna look at some other signs I've made, some other CNC work I've done. So we can talk about router bits, we can talk about other possibilities like machining stuff besides wood, which is really cool. And then we'll just take your questions and we'll free flow from there. Um, Jenny, could you do me a favor and just grab my iPad over there? And uh, I wanna make sure that if any questions are coming in, I'm staying on top of that. Thank you, ma'am. So here's what we're gonna do initially. We're gonna have a look at the machine. And like I said, we're gonna talk about jargon. Let me just take a peek here. Make sure I stay caught up. Let's cover some jargon. So CNC, what's the deal with that? Computer numerical control. So in the 50,000 foot view, what we've got here is a router. In this case, it's a spindle. And when we send a signal to that spindle, it does whatever that signal tells us to do. It moves in different directions. It will move left and right, forward and back, up and down. So let's start out by talking about that. All right. So Ginny, I think a little bit of a zoom, zoom, zoom from you. And let's talk about this forward and back, left and right stuff. Um, yeah, so if you fill your frame, there you go. On this machine, when it moves left and right, that's our X axis. So think about when you had, what is it, geometry, Jenny, right? Where you do uh, graphs. So when you have geometry, X, and, uh, X axis is our left and right. The Y axis is forward and back. And the Z axis is up and down. And, you know, unlike us with a handheld router, you could zoom out a little bit. Unlike us with a handheld router, what CNC's are so crazy good at is, this is like a plunge router, but it's a plunge router that's mechanically controlled. So it can be doing all of that stuff at one time. The Z axis is maybe slowly ramping down into the work while we're moving in the X and Y, and that's what allows it to create these really complex shapes with a lot, a lot of control. Um, so X, Y, and Z axis, spindle. So a spindle is similar to a router, but it provides some other characteristics. We can control the RPM on it, like we can with the router. Spindles, as a rule, have a little bit more oomph than a router does. Some CNC machines do use routers here. Spindle is a better setup for you. It's going to live longer and give you a little bit more oomph, a little more horsepower for those cuts. Let's see what else we have here. On the bed, there's a piece of MDF down here. That's called our spoil board. What happens on some cuts is that when we're making our piece, in order to remove this from the edge of the piece, we're going to cut all the way through. And of course, we wouldn't want to cut into this aluminum bed, so instead we put a spoil board here, and that spoil board is a commodity item. It's replaceable. When it gets all cut up and junked up, we're going to put a new one on there and start from scratch. So you might hear me refer to the spoil board. And then let's just have a look, Jenny, while you're in. Oh, now you're back out again. Scoop back in for me one more time, because I want to show them what a, this cool low-tech hold-down right here where my finger is. You got it? Yeah. All right. Sensitive. It is. It is a very sensitive zoom on that camera. Um, this is a piece of maple. And once I've got it loose, I'll show it to you again with a rabbit cut out of the end of it. And I'm using actually a Craig pocket hole screw here to screw this down. And it engages on the work. And that's what holds everything down. So a real low-tech solution to securing the work. Securing the work is a big deal, of course, because we don't want it to move around. Now my next bit, let me grab that. You could go out a little bit, Jenny. So 
So here's the deal. What's happened so far is that it's taken two cutters to get to this point in the operation. So you could say this so far has been a two-bit operation. Um, it calls for a third cutter. Now, with this machine, what's cool is that what it's doing right now is it's it's zeroing at Z. It's taking the router bit that's in there and it's touching down. Now the machine knows exactly where the zero point is, where the top of my work is. Now when it comes over here, this is where it's going to let me do my bit change. And you might say, how am I going to know what to put in there? And can you see the LCD on there, Jenny? So this is cool. It's calling for a bit change to a 30 degree cutter, which ironically enough is the bit I have in my hand. And what I'm doing here is just like what you would do on a standard router. There's a collet up in here. So a collet wrench. The red button is a spindle lock. That one comes out. This one goes in. And with this machine, the way this is set up, if you saw me click this button over here or turn this dial, what that does is it disengages power from the spindle. So that's like unplugging the router in your shop. That thing can't, the spindle can't turn on when I'm in this mode. I'm going to leave that open. And then what I'm going to have you do, Jenny, is anticipate it, what it's going to do next is it's going to go from here to that touch point. So right there, if you get on that, then they'll be able to see how it gets its zero point. Ready, Freddy? All right, so I'm telling the machine that I'm G2G. So now what it needs to know is how far is that bit sticking out compared to the one that was just in there? And it's about to figure that out. So that zeroes the Z. That's really, really important when you change bits. You've got to re-zero the Z. We don't have to re-zero the X and Y because that didn't change. We only have to re-zero the Z. Now let's turn over this way. So I think, Jenny, if you roll in, that'll help the microphone so that I don't have to talk over the running machine so much. When, one of the things I should point out is um, that machine has got a, a built-in vacuum on it, and I'm intentionally not running it now because it would be it's hard enough to talk over the router. It would be really hard to also talk over the vacuum. All right, I'm just going to scroll again for questions here. And then we'll talk about some other sign and stuff. All right. So let me show you some things that I've done on a CMC machine, and um, just to you know try to give you some uh, some motivation, get you excited about this. Thank you, Jenny. This is cut out of walnut. See the rope border on here? That's, in, that's a design piece, a 3D clip art that's included in VCAR. VCAR Pro is what I use. So part of the reason I brought this out is it's very, very simple to add this kind of a detail to the work that we're doing with the CNC. And one of the things to keep in mind, this is 3D clip art. And when we start talking about router bits in just a second, I'm going to be referencing the 3D clip art. So just kind of keep that in your brain um, so that you remember what I was talking about here. Now, man cave. This is a piece of red cedar. 
very, very simple work. One of the things I don't like about this is that it's not, from a distance, it's a little difficult, a little difficult to see the detail of what's going on here. So let's take that a step further and make it look like this instead. So in this case, I've got black paint in the bottom of the letters and in the bottom of the football. And what that does is it makes everything pop a whole lot more. It makes it a lot easier to read. Now I've got two of these. And it's very, very subtle for this camera to pick up, but there's a difference between these two. One of the problems, cedar is a great sign making material. But one of the problems with it is it's very, very porous. So what happens, the approach here is, is there one more of these being in? Oh, it's on that tape. What you do is, you do the CNC work, step one. Then you paint the whole thing, step two. And then you sand the paint off the surface, and that leaves paint in the low spots. Now, where I was going with this is, with cedar, it's a really porous material. So a lot of times when that paint hits, it weeps off into the area surrounding the letter. So then you get this kind of muddy look to the edge of the letter. And when I look at these, on this one, the letters are really crisp. The, the paint delineation is really sharp. On this one, the paint has started to weep off into the cedar. Let's see, can you do a zoom right there, Ginny, on the top of that M and maybe they can pick that up. We are like high def with really high uh, upload speed. All right, so right there at the top of that M, right there, the paint has actually started to bleed away, but it didn't do that on this one. The difference is that before I painted this one, I shot everything with shellac, with de-wax shellac. Shot it meaning I sprayed the sign with de-wax shellac, I let that dry, then, did the black over the top, then sanded off the excess. So that the trick out of this, the tip out of this is when you shoot it with shellac first, you seal it up and that does a really, really, really good job of preventing the paint from being able to weep out into that porous grain. So in something like a hard maple where the grain is tighter, this wouldn't be as big a deal. But in red oak, pine, cedar, all of these open grain woods that have a lot of porosity, this is a really, really good trick to know to, pre to prevent that paint from weeping on you. All right. Now, this is a little different approach, and I think this is this saying. I think is Jenny's grinning over there. What? She's grinning and shaking her head. I think it's pretty funny. It's cute. So look at this stuff. This is a really cool material. This is PVC. In my neck of the woods, Home Depot sells this in plank form. They sell PVC 1x6s and 1x8s, 8 feet long. So, cut it to size. Now, there's painting involved, but it's the like inverse of what I showed you previously. In this case, I put the red paint on, and then I did the CNC work. So by cutting through the red paint, it exposes the white, that gives us the contrast that we want so that that's really easy to read. If all I did is cut into the white face, it'd be like impossible to see my really funny saying on here. Um, but by having the red paint on there first, it gives us that visibility, that legibility that we want. Uh, one of the things I really like about this product, when it comes to outdoor signs, it's cool because you don't have to do anything to this. You don't have to seal it. You don't have to put polyurethane on it. You cut it to size, you see and see it, it's ready to hang outside. Good to go. So look for that at big box stores, PVC board. All right. I'm going to look for questions again. How's it going with you over there, Jeannie? Big thumbs up. You're, you're very quiet today. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. All right. 
now. And then, can you see the, um, the smaller piece of maple on that pile? Could you grab that for me, please? No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is cool because these are good examples of within the design software, I take one design, but I apply different tool paths to it to get different looks. So let's look at this one first. This is, uh, so my kid, my son just earned his Eagle Scout award. Way to go, George Jr. Um, so this plaque, BSA Eagle Scout 2017, there's a three-dimensional eagle over here. Exact same sign. Here, but look at the difference. A, B, it's like going to the eye doctor. A, B. So on this one, which one am I on? On this one, the letters are V carved and they're cut into the surface. And then of course we have the eagle over here. On this one, it's the same font, it's the same piece of 3D clip art, but on this one, by changing the tool path, the letters stand proud of the surface and it gives it a whole different look. So this is about just playing with the software, playing with your designs, and making different things happen. All right. Plexiglass. Now, one of the things that's cool about this, there's different ways we can handle this. In this case, everything is cut from the back in a mirror image. So when I'm looking at it here, this face is dead flat. But all the work is done from the back. And we want to remember this, we're going to talk about router bits in just a second. This is polycarbonate is the material. We want to remember this because we want to talk about router bits and the effect that the polycarbonate has on our bit selection. Now, how about this? I did not machine copper or bronze on the CNC machine. What I did machine is a piece of MDF. Then when it came off of the machine, I primed it and I painted it with this stuff. It's a Rust-Oleum product, Rust-Oleum beaten copper. I've put this on MDF a gazillion times. It's such a nice look. It really turns a uh, sow's ear into a silk purse. It's really, really a cool way to treat MDF. Uh, once again, Big piece of 3D clip art here. Helmet, football, jersey. Um, 30 degree bits to do the lettering on here. And uh, just a really nice touch to hit it with that copper paint. All right, like the polycarbonate, let's think out of the box a little bit. How about this? Not a sign, but some pretty cool CNC work. And I hope the uh, audio files out there are not ready to strangle me over this. Um, this is an old LP record available at Goodwill stores for next to nothing, and I turned it into a clock. And again, I want to remember that we're talking about this when we get to router bits because we're dealing with a plastic here, and we have to treat that a little bit differently than we do a chunk of wood. But these are neat. I love these LP record clocks, and it's really cool if you can find one that's an album that's got significance to the person you're giving it to. All right, this one's a heavy one. It looks like stone and you might just take it for granted because it is granite. Jenny's rolling her eyes at me. Um, this is a 12 by 12 granite tile from a big box store. Now, when we talk about CNC cutting, this isn't cutting, it's engraving, it's dragging. The bit that gets used with this is a diamond drag and it just gets pulled across the surface to create that engraving pattern, you don't run the spindle for this. The spindle is not spinning. It's simply being used kind of like a stylus to pull that device across the granite so that it engraves it. I've done this on granite, glass, pieces of mirror. It's really, really a nice approach. All right, here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look over there and get a, what's the status? 
doesn't look like it. It's almost done. Because I want to talk about router bits next, and I want to not have to keep talking over the machine if I can help it. Oh, and I've got one more thing to show you here. Too. This other piece that's laying here is cool. Remember, we just looked at a piece of granite. This looks like a piece of stone as well, but if we do this, it's another piece of MDF. In this case, this is another paint. It's an aerosol paint you can get from a big box store. My family tree is full of nuts. Jenny's laughing at that one. Um, and it's just, it's paint that looks like stone. Um, it's got a lot of body to it. It's got a lot of texture to it. So when you have a fine cut like this tree, you gotta be a little bit careful with this product that you don't fill in your details. But it's another great way to take advantage of inexpensive MDF. And MDF, MDF machines on a CNC machine, it machines like a dream. It cuts crisp, it's, it produces very, very, very sharp images. It just doesn't look like much. So when you know these tricks about paint that looks like scone, or paint that looks like copper, it's a great way to be able to take advantage of that MDF. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. Jenny's checking the letters. So do this, Jenny. On that side of the machine that Bob I was holding on to, hold, push, Put. push and hold the enter key I'm just gonna I'm gonna stall that and I'll show you what we're making because I've got one already done that's better so I just I paused the machine but this is what is cooking over there it says entertain strangers lest they be angels unaware so that 30 degree bit was just now wrapping up the text so Again, 3D clip art, that's the angel over here. And then a perimeter cut, that was done with a quarter inch bit. And then a 30 degree cutter, a 30 degree engraving bit, in order to produce those really nice crisp script type letters. So that's what's running in that machine right now. All right, let's talk router bits. I'm gonna put them, Ginny, on this board that's painted brown so that there's a nice contrast for you. Because really it's, you know, all about you. Sorry. All right, you with me? All right, here we go. I'm going to have you come in on this router bit right here, and I'm going to grab my pencil so I don't have to point with my big fat finger. All right, so this router bit is important to talk about because we've referenced it sort of um, a handful of times. When we talk about doing 3D clip art, you definitely want to know about this style of bit. And to be honest, I didn't even know that these existed until, let me fix that for you. I didn't even know that this style of bit existed until I started doing CNC work. This is called a ball nose bit. And when we look at being able to get down and get funky, get down in here and do the detail required on this 3D work, look at the feathers, look at how fine that's cut. Now this one, the Eagle was done with an eighth inch ball nose. This particular cutter is a quarter inch ball nose. So obviously they come in different sizes and you're gonna choose the size based on the level of detail that it is you're trying to produce. So, quarter inch ball nose. Really, really important series of bits to understand. There, is that in your frame? There's a 16th inch ball nose. So obviously with that cutter, we can produce much finer detail. We can get into tighter spots. Another really important bit 
and very common part of kind of a starter set for CNC work. Come on, baby. I'm going to have to hold that one. This one I've used a bunch of times already. This is a V-bit. Now remember, when I started that last cut, I said I was putting in a 30-degree V-bit. This is a 60-degree V-bit. So that's the angle here, from carbide to carbide, literally, 60-degree angle. So with the 30-degree that's in there now, it's pointier. So we can very commonly get these 30, 60, 90. So as that number goes up, the carbide gets flatter. As the number goes down, it's pointier. That pointier cutter is going to let us kick in a little bit more detail. So again, if we come back to something like this tree, because of the fine cuts required in that tree, I'm sure that was done with a 30 degree bit to get in there and do that really, really fine detail. So a series of V-bits are really, really important to have in your collection. Leave that right in there and then it'll hold it for me. This is an end mill bit and stuff like this with your handheld router work or router table work, you've probably already seen a bunch of times. These are cuts that we'll use for stuff like the perimeter cut on this piece. That was done with a quarter inch end mill. One of the things I really like about this is it's a spiral cutter. And just like if we're doing handheld, just like if we're doing router table work, that spiral is going to give us superior surface finish over just using a regular straight bit. So that's a great way to go with your CNC work. One of the things I really try to avoid is the S word at all costs, the S word being sanding. So the better cut I can get off my bit, the less sanding I'm going to have to do on this piece later. And that's a good thing. So a series of spiral cutting end mills is a great thing to have in your CNC collection, your CNC router bit collection, so that, again, with that spiral, we can really optimize the surface finish that that'll provide for us. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna take a step backward, but I wanna show you this one too. There's another tapered ball nose cutter. This is an eighth inch bit. So there is a difference here where this is tapered, and the quarter inch that we looked at initially, so it, again, it gives you a great idea of the detail, level of detail we'll be able to get out of this cutter compared to this one. Because it's a finer tip, it's gonna give us finer detail. All right, now, I talked about plastic a couple different times. When we go to plastic, and if you wanna cut metal on your CNC, which is very capable of doing non-ferrous metal. Then our bits change a lot. Look at this guy, isn't that cool looking? I intentionally went with a big bit. This is a half inch diameter, so it would be easy for you to see what that cutting profile looks like. This is called an O-bit. And look at this as I spin it. What do you notice about the flutes? And I'm, that's a red herring because it's not flutes, it's flute. So it's a single flute bit. And I'll tell you this, when I first started cutting these LPs, I tried doing this with just a standard eighth inch spiral bit and they wouldn't do it. Well, I kept melting the plastic. So when you talk to companies like, when you're looking to do work like this, a great way to do it, you could zoom out, pick out, you know, rant for a little bit here. When you're gonna do work like this, take advantage of the resources that are available. So one, you got an Iconic machine, if you call the folks at Iconic and say, here's what I'm looking at cutting on the CNC machine, what advice do you have? They've probably already cut it and they're gonna be able to give you some help. When you call the folks at Amana and say, I wanna cut an LP record, instead of ruining a couple eighth inch spiral bits like I did, they're gonna be able to point you in the right direction. And it's not only about the cutter, it's also about feeds and speeds, so that means how fast should the spindle be turning? How fast should the spindle be moving across your work to make sure that it's gonna cut the plastic, not melt the plastic? Another great example of that, I've cut lots and lots of styrofoam on my CNC. Standard pink two inch building foam. It's a great material to CNC, but it's another one where you wanna get the bit right and you wanna get the feeds and speed right so that you cut it, you don't melt it. 
All right. I'm going to look at this and then I'm going to look at my bit pile and see if there's anything else we should talk about there. And then one of the things I want to do is get, I've got another, oh, the board that's painted here, we'll throw that on the machine just so that you can see how boards go on, how boards get set up. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a brief commercial timeout here. Give me a sec. Okay. Ready to head for the machine, Jenny? All right. I'm going to take this. I need stuff. I need tools over there. All right. Now, I mentioned it earlier when I walked away from this machine. Um, and just so I could get it, this machine has a vacuum system built into it. And I just, I wasn't running it before because it was bad enough to talk over the spindle. I didn't want to have to also talk over the bed. All right, so this job is done. So now what happens? Well, we grab our five. And we tell it the job is done. And what the spindle is going to do is move to a home position. And part of what's great about that is it gets it out of the way. And that allows me to have access to the bed here so that I can make a change. Now, clean that off. Right tool for the job. Now, a good question would be, why is that lovely chunk of oak painted brown? And this, the approach here is like what I showed you with that PVC board. What will happen is that when I come back and cut this later, we're going to cut through the red tape. No, we're going to cut through the rust colored red. And when we do that, we're going to expose the oak below, which is going to make the sign really pop. So that's Again, that treatment you do ahead of time um, to give the sign a little bit more oomph, to give it a little bit more jump. Now, Jenny, if you come in, now that I can turn these hole downs, they'll be able to see that better. So if you can come in on any one of those. There you go. So very, very simple. You can make this out of scrap. Here's the big key. This rabbit that you cut in the end of it has to be less than the thickness of material that you're holding down. So in other words, if I have that rabbit too big and this bottoms out to the spoil board before this starts to grip my work, it's not going to do anything. And again, what I found is the pocket hole screws from Craig do a really good job of providing grip into this MDF and holding everything in place. All right, so this is come on. So now what I'm doing is I'm manually controlling that position, and we're going to do more of that in just a second. That lets me get here and back out that screw. All right, now my new workpiece comes on.
And then all we have to do is put these hold downs on, drive the screw. And the only thing you got to be careful of with these, they're solid wood. So if I overdrive the screw, I could conceivably split that ramp there. So you got to be a little bit careful when you're putting the screws in. Now, test question. What don't we know? So was I really paying a lot of attention when I put the board on there? Not too much. So what the machine doesn't know at this second in time is where this board is like relative to the router bit, relative to the spindle. We got to tell it that. For my work, I pretty commonly use the center of the board as the x, y, zero, zero point. And so what we need to do is get the machine to understand where my x, y, zero is. So to make it easier to see, I'm going to put a piece of masking tape on here. And I think, Jenny, what I'm going to ask you to do is to come in so that you can get a little bit more like vertical over the work. I mean, roll the whole, watch the cord there, it's tripod's touchy. That's all right. We're all friends here. Now what I'm going to do is overall length is 18. I'm pretty sure half of that is 9. Overall width is 11. Half of that is about 5.5. That's the center of my board. So now what we do, open this so you can see what's happening. My cutter's in there. Thank you, ma'am. And remember, I have the ability to manually move the machine. X, Y, because I like you. I'm dating myself by quoting the Mickey Mouse show. So what we're doing is bringing the cutter over that X, Y origin, zip, zip, zip. Doing little jogs. Is jogging is good for you. I like how I'm positioned over it for the X, Y. Next thing is the Z. Now what we can do, make this Z a little bit easier to do, is put an end mill in here. So that instead of a pointed bit like this 30 degree engraver, it's a little bit easier to hit that Z which is when it's just kissing the top of the material. If I have a square end, end mill, but right there, I'm just kissing the top. Now, I'll just come to you, Ginny. Enter to set origin. And watch these numbers. Enter to continue. See how it zeroed everything? So now the machine knows that that's my X, Y, Z, zero. And then we'll just come out of here and it provides me the opportunity, the option to start my next file. Let's head back for the bench, Ginny, and we'll look at questions one more time. And look at router bits one more time. So again, you know, I can't say enough about uh, thanking Iconic CNC and Amana Tools for providing this opportunity. Um, I have really fallen in love with CNC work. Um, it, I think it's just a direction you can take as far as you want. There's so much you can do with it. I was talking about machining foam, engraving glass, engraving granite, of course, cutting wood. Um, Ginny and I built an electric guitar not too long ago. In fact, I think the CNC machine had only just gotten in here. Um, and we need to do another electric guitar so now we can take advantage of using the CNC to do the work instead of a bandsaw like we did on her electric guitar.
Lots of possibilities. All right, let me cruise router bits again, make sure that I didn't leave anything out here. All right, we talked about tapered ball nose and ball nose bits. We talked about specialty bits for cutting aluminum or cutting plastic. Talked about taking advantage of the CNC manufacturer like Iconic or the router bit manufacturer like Amana to, you know, don't just throw darts at a dartboard when you're ready to cut. Take advantage of the resources and uh, let them get you pointed in the right direction. We talked about V-bits, really important for sign making. Um, and again, the different angle on there is going to provide different levels of detail on, the, on your work. Um, for me, I probably use the 30 and the 60 the most. Don't do too much with a 90 degree. Um, all right. Well, I have no questions here in front of me. So that, my friends, takes care of our live CNC presentation. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And watch for more of this specialized live stuff. We're, uh, we're looking to do a lot more of these as we find the opportunities to do so. So that's it for me. Anything from you, Ginny? No. She says no. Thanks to Ginny for running the camera. Thanks to Sam, who's off-site running the board back behind the scenes. And this has been a blast. Really glad to have the opportunity to share a little bit of CNC with you. See you later.